Dear friends, welcome to Body Language and Travel Show. Today's special guest is Mrs. Emma Weiner, Influential Leadership for Women. Her group coaching program, Speaking at Work, will support and help you and has support and help a lot of people to be visible and credible through executive voice coaching. So please help me in welcoming Emma Weiner. Emma, welcome. Thank you so much, Roxani. Thanks for having me here. Today with Emma, we will try to talk about uh, a, a, a rhythm in our voice. We're, guy, we're going to talk about models in life. Emma will share her wisdom and advices concerning how to deliver a presentation in excellence. We're going to talk about breathing uh, through our, with our dive, uh, diaphragm and many, many, many other things. But first, um, I would like to share with us your story, how it happens in you, uh, you started this beautiful voice, voice coaching uh, journey. It was some, it was a member of your family, it was another role, med, a med, a role model globally that helped you and assist you. How it happens, how you became this beautiful, amazing voice coaching that we know and we're having the pleasure to have you here with us. Well, thank you. Um, well, I'd love to say that it was a, a grand plan right from the beginning, uh, but it wasn't. I had a very squiggly career. So I started off, I trained as a speech and language therapist. So I worked clinically for a while and I worked in pediatrics. And whilst I absolutely loved the work, I found that working in the NHS was quite a, a struggle. Uh, I found the, the decision by committee quite difficult. And you know, I say that as the child of two parents who worked in the NHS their entire lives, and it's an incredible institution. It just wasn't right for me. So I left and I joined a very, very small company. There was uh, just six people when I joined and we ran events uh, for a global audience. Um, and when I left 10 years later, there were 30 of us and I was director of operations. So internally, I looked after the teams to make sure they all knew what they were doing and how they needed to do their, their work. And then externally, so with our clients, I was always asked to work on communication. So what did their audiences need to know before, during and after their event? And really, really importantly, what did we want those or that audience to think, feel and do? And I loved that part of my job. I really enjoyed it. And what happened was that on site, when we got on site to the events, the production team would come to me and go, oh my God, Emma, Bob is the worst presenter we've ever seen. Can you go and do something? And I'd kind of be excited and I think, yeah, okay. And I'd go and I'd do it. And I, I always felt like a total fraud. I didn't know about imposter syndrome at the time, but I felt like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I did know what I was doing, but I just didn't believe it. So and I, I loved doing that part of my job. I really, really enjoyed it. Then I stopped to have my children and I had two very problematic, very medicalized pregnancies and births. And it was all very complicated. And I discovered that my confidence, my ability to speak up for myself, that person who could stand in, a, in front of an audience of a thousand and not blink, just slowly disappeared. And so my fascination with voice and voice coaching and helping people find their voice and say what they needed to say just became more and more intense. So I discovered there was a master's degree in voice coaching and training at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. And I went there and I had the most incredible, intensive, transformational year when I did my master's degree. And now I focus on helping other people find or hone or finesse their authentic voice so they can communicate their their truth to to their communities to their audiences whoever they might be so as you can see very squiggly but i also feel like everything i've ever done gets pulled into my work and i can talk about different sectors different types of work with with real ease and i can make it apply to business which after all is, is really really important exactly this is an amazing journey because exactly everything you did is now supporting you to deliver your work in excellence and to support uh, corporate work, because this is my next uh, question, because we're talking also about business uh, today. 
when uh, you are a sales executive, when you are a CEO, when you are, okay, a coach and a mentor, because also they have to deliver in excellence to their coaches and mentees, how our voice, the rhythm of our voice can help us to deliver best in a sales pitch, uh, in a team, the CEO to his team uh, uh, members, how just share with us your view how this person, the sales, can approach a sales pitch, from which aspect? Yeah, okay, right. So the first thing to say is we're all salespeople. You don't have to be in a sales job to be a salesperson because every time we're interacting at work, at home, within our families, within our communities, we are always trying to pitch an idea. We're trying to engage people's help. We're trying to change people's minds. We're always selling all the time. So you don't have to have a sales job to think that you have to sell really effectively. What's really important when we're trying to influence, because after all, that's what sales is. It's about persuasion and influence. And also about solving people's problems, like genuine sales. It's really about solving someone's issue. Everything that you think, everything, will leak out of your body somehow or another, whether that's through your body language, through your breath, through the tone of your voice, through the inflection of your voice, through your gesture. So everything you think. So if you go into a situation where you're trying to persuade somebody of something and you don't 100% believe it yourself, that will come across, that will be obvious or at least semi-obvious to your audience, and they'll kind of pull back a bit and they'll think, mm, I'm not quite sure. And probably what they'll think is like, it just doesn't feel right. There's something about it that feels off. They wouldn't be able to articulate it any more than that. I'm gonna give you an example. I was working with um, uh, a lady and she's a coach the other day, and she uh, was saying, everyone negotiates on my packages. Everybody wants to knock them down on price. Why? And so I said, okay, well, pitch me, tell me what you offer, and we'll go through your sales process, which was really robust. But what happened was when she got to the bit where she said, you know, her package is £5,000, she put her arms out sideways and her hands forward, and she tilted her head. And so it's £5,000. Mm -hmm. So what she was doing was, in terms of her body language, uh, the tilt of her head and her arms open, she was asking a question. Mm -hmm. She wasn't making a statement. So when we watched the videos back and I said, can you see what you're doing? She realized the tone of her voice was indicating to her audience that this was a negotiation, that this was a discussion, not a statement of fact. So, but it all stemmed from what she was thinking. She still felt slightly uncertain that that was an okay number to charge for her expertise or that that was going to give her clients enough value, the transformation that they were looking for. So by working on the mindset, and by looking at the body language and knowing what skills you needed to use when you're saying your prices and by remaining silent once you've said the number, really, really important, 5,000 pounds. Let the person process. Then you can move on to the next bit. So yeah, it's really important what we're thinking because it will come out in our, in our body language and, and particularly the tone of voice. You'll be in, absolutely amazed at the number of people who will present an idea um, or say a number for the price of something, but they'll state it as a question. So the tone of their voice goes up. So I think the best course of action is that we should employ more salespeople. So it's a statement made as a question because my voice is making it into a question. And then your audience don't know how to interact with it. They're like, well, was it a statement or was it a question? Does she really think that sales and, and a bigger sales force is the right solution? And so you're undermining your credibility by not standing by your statements of fact. Does that make sense? It makes uh, absolutely sense. And I like because you put here in the conversation the mindset in combination with the body language. And of course, it's so powerful. And also at the same time, when we are adding uh, questioning, of course, it's like we are questioning our own selves our own abilities and the other persons uh, unconsciously they are getting the message and we have to be firmly like that as a statement leave a space to the other person as you said exactly 
to think a little bit. We have to give space. It's not need the other to, to reply at once. Give them space, give them some time. And then you carry on with the statement again. Yes, I like it. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, what you have said right now to say expressions to everyone, to a mother, to a child. Not, yeah. We are not questioning. <laughs> This is a statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clean your room. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I like it a lot. Uh, so it's very, you help me right now to pass to our next question that it is people that uh, they believe in the corporate world that if you are robotic, if you, if you deliver a message without any emotion, uh, if you deliver it like uh, a program, uh, I don't know, something like this, <laughs> artificial intelligence, exactly, <laughs> that then you are trustworthy, then you are credible, and then there is um, the other person who will feel and understand that uh, you are saying the correct, because you are talking empty, if you know what I mean, without emotion. I want you your advice here how to approach people, how to approach virtually or on stage or live and audience. Is it, uh, do we have to stay robotic without emotion? How is it, just to give us your view, how to do this approach, the first 10 minutes, the first 15 minutes before we open the agenda and share uh, the thoughts and the brainstorming, whatever we have to do in this uh, uh, delivery in this uh, environment. Yeah, it's really, it's really important. So uh, fundamentally, as a human being, everybody wants to be seen and heard. We all have this internal drive, this need to be seen and to be heard so that we feel part of the tribe, so we feel safe. You know, it's sort of, if you look at Maslow's triangle, it's kind of one of the psychological safety, it's one of the bottom parts of the triangle. So if we don't feel seen and we don't feel heard, we start to feel like we're not important. We start to retreat or we get angry and it can be really disruptive. So whenever we're starting any interaction with other human beings, whether that's one person or a thousand people, whether it's virtual or on a, a huge stage, it's really important that there's a moment of seeing and being seen. Mm -hmm. So as, as the speaker, you need to be comfortable to be seen. You need to be comfortable that people are looking at you at that moment. But at the same time, you also have to see your audience. Because if you, if you stand there, and I saw recently, I saw a young chap, he's an amazing singer, he's got the most beautiful voice, and he sings gorgeously, but he has no connection with the audience. And so it was beautiful to watch, but it didn't move you because it didn't feel like he was communicating the song to me or to other people in the audience. He was technically amazing but it had no, no connection, no, there was no heart and mind for me. So it's really important that we have this seeing and being seen moment with our audience. And you know, particularly if, that's a, if it's a virtual situation because we're not close together, we don't feel that sort of human vibration that we have, you know, we, we can't touch. So it's really important that we make some space virtually to make sure that our our audience is seen. And one of the things I talk to people about in this sense is that we want to be talking through the camera. So not to the camera, because to the camera, it's like kind of a flat piece of glass. And it feels quite different. If I think about, so if I talk to the camera, it, it sort of sounds a bit like this. If I think about talking through the camera and talking to you in your room, all the way over in Athens, it feels different to me. It's like, I want my voice to reach you as a human being, not to reach the screen. And it feels different to me. And I don't know if it sounds different to you, but if we really wanna make a connection with people, we've got to imagine ourselves speaking through the lens, through the camera and into the other person's room. Exactly, because uh, a camera, mm -hmm. A virtual now, it's a mean. It doesn't mean that it, uh, we have to understand that the important thing is the communication. If I use the telephone for communication, it's okay. If I use a camera for communication, virtual meeting, if I use, doesn't matter. This is just a mean that helped me to communicate. 
okay, it's a, it's a very smart mean because we can communicate globally to many, 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 many people. In one day, we can communicate globally to all over the planet. <laughs> this is good. But we have, as you said, exactly the people to start and change this. Don't afraid. This is just the mean of communication that is helping us to communicate. We have to, to understand that the communication is the important and the first, and then the other is just a mean, doesn't it's just single a camera, a platform. It's, it's just like that. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I, I remember because we have connected in TEDx Sonzi. Uh, and I was so happy to participate there. And uh, I met you there with other amazing people. And I'm so happy and grateful about this that happened to me. And you have talked about breathing. And I want to just, just to share with us a little bit uh, what, how the, if we use our diaphragm uh, breathing, what is the difference? How can make our voice stronger? Yeah, just a little bit to open our uh, mind uh, about this particular breathing situation. <laughs> sure, breath is so, so important. Um, you know, that moment I was talking about a minute ago of seeing and being seen, we need to be breathing in that moment. Because if you stand there on a stage or virtually and you're not breathing, everything stops. Mm -hmm. Everything stops, there's this moment of tension, there's no flow between you and the audience. So in that moment of seeing and being seen, we really need to be breathing. Now let's kind of explain that you know when you're standing up or when you're presenting you are facing the wrong way you're looking this way and everybody else is looking that way <laughs> okay so your brain the oldest bit of your brain your mammalian brain is going oh my god panic you know you're facing the wrong way it's literally thinking you're about to get eaten so if the dinosaur comes around the corner any second you're going to be lunch first that's what your brain is doing when you stand up to speak, which is why when there's more than six people in the room, you start to feel anxious. Your autonomic nervous system kicks into action and says, right, we need to be ready to run before that dinosaur eats us. It's like a slightly outdated iOS system. It hasn't, it hasn't updated to realize that standing up and speaking is not, it doesn't put you in physical danger. So your brain is saying, sit down, be part of the herd, it's much safer. Now, one of the things that happens when that autonomic nervous system kicks in is your breathing changes. Your breathing becomes shallow. So mm -hmm. it moves up into your chest. So your, if you want to think about it in terms of energy, the whole kind of energy of your system moves up because your brain is going, right, where are the exits? How do I get out? Where could I hide? How fast can I run? It's doing all those kind of calculations. And the, so the energy is all in your head. So you're becoming kind of, introverted all this noise is going on and you're becoming focused in your head you've stopped seeing your audience whether it's virtual mm -hmm. or live and the breathing is all the way up here so you've got these tiny shallow breaths because your lungs up here are really small mm -hmm. lower down they're much bigger so you've got this tiny shallow breath that's going on now and breath is the power to your voice so if you've only got a little bit of breath you're going to have either a quiet or underpowered or potentially shaky voice because mm -hmm. there's just not enough breath there to power the strong, confident, authentic voice that we all have. So getting our breathing back down into our body is really, really important. It will help us feel calmer. It will provide more breath for our voice to sound strong and confident. And it's going to help you think about what it is you want to say next because it just quietens the noise that's going on here. So it's really important. We can totally change our state by the way that we breathe. Because once we start to breathe deeply, the body, the, the mammalian brain particularly kind of goes, oh, it's okay, danger's over, we're all good, fine. You know, and it switches off all the hormones and then you can kind of, the body relaxes. So we can trick ourselves into feeling better as speakers by using what we call diaphragmatic breathing so that's that's kind of the, the breathing that we use when we're really really relaxed um, so it, it's really key that we learn how to do that kind of diaphragmatic breathing and it sounds kind of dramatic but actually that's the kind of breathing we use almost all of the time until we get into those situations of stress so it's not that you're learning something new 
of just learning how to apply something you already do mm. in a new situation. Ah, this is really smart. Yes, I like it. So yes, in this situation, show people, the speakers, the presenters, uh, okay, this is coachable. Of course, you know that we already do it, but somebody has to coach us. As that's why it is your role over here to support us uh, as a presenters, of course. And I like this that you say, because in like that, the brain will feel safe. So in this way, we treat our brain uh, in order to relax and to start communicating with the audience and uh, all this uh, dialogue, the inner dialogue to stop somehow and to start communicating and uh, enjoy our presentation and be happy about that we are there on the stage and we are presenting. That is so, so important. Uh, I like it a lot. And um, so Sam, if we can say, I know that you know a lot of advices. <laughs> you have a, a big range <laughs> in all aspects. But if we could say that uh, to find three, the top three, for, an, uh, for somebody to deliver an excellent present, presentation, uh, what is the, the three advices that you could suggest us? <laughs> okay, so the first one is about diaphragmatic breathing, okay? Oh, so without going through into an, a great big exercise, the best thing you can do to get your body breathing diaphragmatically again, when you're feeling anxious, is not take the advice of your friends and family who will tell you to take a deep breath. It's all right, just take a deep breath. Don't do that. Okay, so when we're feeling a bit tense, when we're anxious, we're like a balloon that's already filled with air. Now, if you put more air in the system, what's going to happen to that balloon? Which we don't want, right? Okay, we don't want the speaker going like that. What we want is to release the tension in the body. So, my advice to people is if you are ever in doubt, breathe out. Just relax. And then your body goes... You need air and it does a lovely deep breath so that's the simplest quickest easiest way to get back into diaphragmatic breathing so if you're ever in doubt breathe out the second piece of advice would be try to don't try to impress try to express yourself okay so don't try and be perfect don't try and be really clever don't try and um bamboos on your audience try to really express your ideas express your passion and we talked before about not being robotic express your ideas use your your amazing storytelling techniques which we all have as human human beings use lots of vocal color use your hands be really human be authentic make mistakes it doesn't matter so i would say express yourself don't try to impress and then finally, I think that your audience will forgive you for absolutely anything. You can forget your notes, you can drop them, your PowerPoint might go wrong, you might stumble over your words. Truthfully, your audience doesn't mind. They'll forgive you for that as long as you show you care. So you've got to show them that you care about where they are. They have spent their time listening to you. So you have to show that you understand that you care about their situation. So always start with where they are. You might be trying to sell a new idea like, guys, we should really be over here, but they're miles away. They're in a muddy bog and they've got to go through a valley and through a river and it's hot and, you know. So go to where they are, start with, show that you care your, to your audience by starting where they are and then very gently bring them to where you are. So if in doubt, breathe out express yourself don't try to impress and show your audience you care by starting where they are not where you'd rather they were i love it and this uh, especially also the last part i like it with uh, because i'm a mother <laughs> that's why i'm repeating it <laughs> and i have a teenager uh, also and uh, we have to start always from their level for example if a person is crying we cannot start from high up, come on, why to cry, life is beautiful. No, we are starting at the same emotional state and then we guide them up slowly, slowly to take them to help them up. Yes, this is a very beautiful advice. I like it a lot, all, everything. And about to breathe out, if you don't know, just breathe out, be safe, side and finish. <laughs> Do it, yes. 
I like it. And yes, the audience, uh, if they see that you are care and you are expressive, um, maybe they don't agree what we are saying, but if they see that you're real and authentic, it doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah, they disagree, that's fantastic because they've engaged with, your, with what you're saying. That's amazing. Yes. It doesn't, we're not always trying to get everyone to agree with us. We want them to engage with our topic. Yeah, uh, that, this is another tip. Yeah, yeah, of course, we want. <laughs> Oh, I want to know what is your motto in life. Please tell me what is your motto or the vision in your professional life or in uh, life with uh, your okay. friends, whatever. <laughs> motto in life is little steps. Take a little yeah. step. And over time, that's going to turn into an amazing journey. You know, you don't have to take great running leaps every now and then. I mean, sometimes it's good to do that now and then, but, you know, just little improvements, it's good enough because over time you'll look back and go wow I started all the way over here and look where I am now and then uh, my vision is that when I'm working with these amazing women that I work with these incredible CEOs and COOs and these people who have these incredible visions in the world is I think Jacinda Ardern the uh, president of New Zealand is an amazing communicator I think she's an incredible leader and I am helping more women become amazing leaders and amazing communicators in the world so I'm secretly producing an army of Jacinda Ardern's to go out into the world and create incredible change. Oh, I like this it's beautiful it's very empowerment because it's like you're giving light a different light to a lot of people so they go out to sign and to inspire and motivate other people. So this, it will be spread a lot of faster with this way because one can do nothing, uh, but it is it were the connection. I add to, you add to me this value and then I have to add this value to the other person, to the other, everybody it's like this beautiful, magical human uh, journey because we are all here to help each other. Yes, and uh, I like it a lot. Emma Weiner, thank you for being here. So pleasure, so proud. Uh, all these beautiful advices that you have shared uh, to us, all the contact de details, I will put it uh, to the post, to the article that I will accompany this video. I'm wishing you all the best. I'm a fan of yours. You have a very uh, powerful page in LinkedIn. And your articles are very amazing. So I will share uh, the link to your LinkedIn profile. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's lovely. I, I love talking to you, Roxanne. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Emma.